Hello, welcome back all my cosmic friends and travelers. So first of all, I wanted to say early, happy, <laughs> happy Labor Day weekend. Happiness to all the unions that have ever been formed and the, um, uh, the foundation that has been set for, uh, for, for people to work safely and for people to work with dignity, not as slaves, right? So anyway, with that said, this will be your forecast for September 2nd through the 8th. And we have the new moon coming in this week at, at 11 degrees of Virgo. We also have Mars moving into Cancer. And then Mercury, that stationed direct, but it was in Leo, now goes back into Virgo where it first started. <laughs> Not first, but this time around. But that doesn't happen until Sunday night. So anyway. Let me just bring you over my table and we'll go through it one day at a time as always. Okay, hold on. Okay, so like I said, happy Labor Day weekend, first of all. Uh, this chart isn't starting until Monday, which is exactly Labor Day, but you know, start uh, enjoying the <laughs> relaxing time off, of course, on Friday. Uh, and I wanted to say from, <laughs> from last week's reading, Wow. Now, now, this is like something in hindsight. Uh, had I been asked, actually, you know what? We were. Lisa and I were asked. So somebody was super wise in the live chat last weekend, and they asked us if uh, there would be any more new indictments on Trump. And so we both were like, wait, what? <laughs> and we looked, and we both got yes. Now, it turns out that while Mercury was re retrograde, uh, and especially moving back into Leo, the, and all of that would have been in uh, Trump's uh, 12th house, so 12th house of the past, you know, karma, all that good stuff. Uh, and while Mercury was there, doing its thing, going through it, and then retrograding back into it, what was happening was there, Jack Smith was a part of a brand new grand jury trial. So behind the scenes, he was conducting a grand jury trial. Now this is for the J6 case, right? Which is, you know, this is one of the worst ones. I mean, this is the one where a person could go down for treason. So who knew that that was happening? So he's been indicted by a, a brand new grand jury. I mean, that's just phenomenal. It's not the same people, and not, not the same jury doing, redoing it. It's a brand new grand jury. And, of course, it's, he had to do it because of this, you know, stupid scrotus, that, uh, which I completely take out uh, Katanji Brown-Jackson, Sonia Sotomayor, and Elena Kagan out of that mixture when I use that term. But I... Uh, you know, the dark six decided to give him presidential immunity for official acts. So Jack Smith had to go back in, and uh, he, he took three weeks for that, and maybe the three weeks was part of the trial, and he had already done the paperwork on his own ahead of time. Um, but anyway, uh, Justice um, Tanya Chutkin did give him, she, she did grant him that extra three weeks. And then, you know, I think it was yesterday, the day before, I can't remember when it came out. It's just been like, whoa. <laughs> and I keep, I keep hearing that. Uh, I kept hearing this. To me, it's kind of a lame song because I never really liked it. But it was, you know, like, reunited. That one. I'm not much into sappy songs like that. Uh <laughs> And then I realized this morning, because it just like it didn't go away. You, you're trying to fall asleep and it's there. I wake up and it's there. And it's and I'm like, oh, <laughs> get this out of my head. Delete, delete. And then this morning I started cracking myself up because I realized it's re-indicted. I should have changed the lyrics to re-indicted. Okay, so now I can have some fun with it. And I don't think it feels good to him, but so there's that. So, and this week also on the political front, uh, September 6th, so we'll see when we get to that chart. Um, although I'm not going to bust out his chart and go through it 
I, I kind of know it by heart, so I'll, I'll remember where things are, but um, the, um, the, they're scheduled oral arguments for um, his appeal of the verdict with his first trial with E. Jean Carroll, you know, the one where he won five million bucks. I'm sorry, she won five million bucks, but then he kept defaming her. So, so she won the five million bucks for uh, defamation and sexual abuse, and he was ordered to pay five million. He not only turned around and lied and defamed her again, and and then she took him to court again. <laughs> course everything's under appeal so this is that first that first appeal and the, I don't know why I'm laughing there's nothing funny about this actually at all but it's, it's kind of funny but not haha -ha, that it will be uh, coming up you know not too far before the election I mean and it's just it'll be next week I mean it's here it's this coming into this week four days from Monday so and that's when the moon will be in Libra by the way <laughs> now, that's funny. Libra ruling, uh, of course, all things legal. So there's that. Um, yeah, dang it. I think in his, hold on, I do have to look at his chart to see real quick. I think it's in his second house. That would be so funny if it was second house of money, right? Wouldn't it be? Here's his natal. Yeah. And Mercury retrograde, oh, it was actually in his first house. Depends on which chart you use. I mean, this is the one on his birth certificate. I think the time is late because his mother was having trouble with birth. And I I don't think that they recorded it till later. But it gives him a 29-degree ascendant. I really think his ascendant is somewhere much um, earlier, which puts, the, which puts Mars in his first house, which makes more sense to me, and brings Virgo up in here. But so anyway... Mercury retrograde has been uh, here, and it retrograded back. It's, I think it's at about, what is it now? 23 degrees, yeah. So that's uh, still in his first house. So he was being examined <laughs> while Mercury was retrograde by a jury, by a grand jury. So, okay, let's go ahead and move forward. Um, the things to keep in mind, I, I have this, you know, set at zero degrees because I don't know where you live, so I don't know what time zone you're in, and this also shows the natural zodiac, so it's easy for you to, you know, get into your head that, you know, Aries is first, you know, we've, we've, we've got, like I was saying last week, uh, spring, summer, fall, and winter through the chart. If you want to look at it that way, if it helps you to remember the signs and the, um, you know, the order they come in, I think it's easier to look at it this way. So, but what is, um, the way I have it set with my settings here, I have it in a, a tight orb. I, for instance, if I were to put it on, um, on a, whoops, that's not the right one, aspects. If I put it on the standard orb, this is what you get. So it's a lot. So I instead, I put it on the exact aspect so that you can focus in. And I can focus in, too. But see how we still have, and, and you see this pretty much, I think, in the exact aspects, too. We still have series, T-squaring the nodes, the nodal access. Okay, Series will always have to do with what we will put ourselves into as far as protecting ourselves, nurturing ourselves, uh, nurturing those that we love, uh, the things that we will stand up and fight for, uh, the uh, issues in our lives that matter to us most, and series also rules, uh, you know, so we're, we're, we're talking like home, hearth, food, farming, uh, women's reproductive rights. Uh, the series also it has to do, in your natal chart, it has to do with your, the maternal imprint, so you want to look at that, you know, like the home environment you grew up in. And um, the series is also connected to, besides um, food farming, home, hearth, animals. 
So your, your critters, right, small critters, or, or well, I don't, I don't know how big of a dog you may have, or <laughs> if you have a little pony living in your home, <laughs> maybe, I don't know. Or, uh, yeah, miniature pony, or, or pig. <laughs> Uh, but anyway, home or yard, whatever, or even being, uh, you know, boarded somewhere else, the series would, would rule all of those things that you love dearly. And also, it's connected to grief and separation. So because series is in Capricorn, it we had a little retrogradation and now it's direct. So it's going, it's covering back some of the same territory it's already gone over and we will we will go through again and see you know who's going to be separated from their money who what dark corrupt politicians will be separated from their uh power right yeah and i have to give a big shout out to my friend melissa melissa writer who uh sent me the information as to who's backing project 2025 and it's so it's pretty much the the you know Charles Koch, the, the brother that's still alive, and Joseph Coors, Betsy DeVos, Peter Thiel, of course, uh, we know him, and then uh, Heritage Foundation, what's the other one? Federalist Society, and there was some other, well, in the NRA, and then there was a, a couple other ones. I posted it in the um, community section if you want to, you might have to scroll down quite a bit to find it because it was a few days ago, but... Yeah, and I, I think one of the melon dudes was on there too. You know, remember the banking heirs? So, yeah, these are, these are guys that want to control our reproductive rights and freedoms, health care choices, and don't understand that abortion is a form of health care, <laughs> right? I mean, ectopic pregnancies and all of that. And just like I said months ago, women will die, and women have been dying. Babies have been dying. Babies have had to be, you know, born who were who had already crossed over while they were in the womb, and then the mother has to has to deliver. It's just heartbreaking. I I just can't even. I can't even. So. With Pluto up here, retrograded back now into Capricorn at that anoretic degree, we're going to see some more of, uh, for over the next about two and a half months, until it um, goes direct and then makes it back into um, Aquarius, we are going to see who's left to bring into the that needs to be brought into the light. So Pluto, remember, hard, fast rules are it buries things. So it can bury somebody who, you know, bury with legal issues, bury by putting them in jail, bury by whatever. Uh, <laughs> or it can bring things to light. But it will tend to strip away what it, strip away the heavy, harsh ego it will help us to eliminate what keeps us from uh, our, our own human personal evolution. Pluto also erupts sometimes, like a volcano. But bottom line, it's helping you to, to um, uh, evolve, you know, to grow. Pluto will help to empower. So I always like to look at it as, you know, is somebody controlling you or are you trying to control them? Or it, it's basically, you know, the question of where where the power is and what we do with it. And like I keep saying, you know, life is a power management issue. So Pluto, even though like right now we have the exact, um, within two minutes, the exact sextile. Uh, but as the days go by, this will kind of drop off, but I mean, the, the line there, the sextile there will drop off, but it's still there, you know, especially if you go into a much wider orb, like six or seven degrees, it's still there. So we have these two major planets helping to empower ourselves by getting in touch with our source energy within, by getting in touch with, um, anything that helps us come into unity consciousness 
and our artistic abilities. And I have no judgment over art. I mean, to me, it's like, you know, doing the dishes can be a form of art. Um, but Neptune rules the arts. It, it rules, um, you know, all the things that make us feel at one with, with everything else or the things that we want to connect with. Like, to me, I just kind of want to connect with the beauty of nature and, you know, other beautiful things, but I don't like connecting with the dark, ugly, you know. Unless it's teaching me something about the way the legal system works. You know, I do tend to love murder mysteries because of that. Uh, and the forensic, ooh, like the things they can, <laughs> things they have now, versus the way back in the day where they never used gloves and you know they touched everything and there was they they didn't do fingerprinting way way back. But so anyway, um, what we have going on that's the most important. Uh, so earlier in the morning, here let me do this. Let's go back to. Let's go back to some hours. Let's go. Let's go back to... Come on. Mm -mm -mm. You have to back to like maybe 5 a.m., 4 a.m. Okay. So the moon's in Virgo, but it's six degrees from... Um, a, little, a little more than six degrees from the sun. So we're headed into the new moon. It doesn't happen until later in the evening, of course. But uh, the backdrop energy we, is, like I was saying, seri series with the squares to the nodes, which is all about justice, fairness, equality. Uh, Venus there is all about women and our money and relationships. Uh, Venus is one of the rulers of, or is the ruler of Libra and Taurus. And... So there's a tension field there between the past and where you want to go. Has some relationship upset the apple cart and made you rethink it? Maybe there's some realization that that person's not really trustworthy because Libra is, you know, can sometimes be about um, somebody who's just a little, little um flighty and not really committing and maybe you're you've been waiting for some type of a commitment or maybe they're just kind of polarizing and don't realize it or maybe manipulative just to stay connected but they're not really there with you like not really present with you and that can also be the case with Aries too because Aries can be somebody that's just you know a little invasive so you can have the opposites of like you know in your face and then withdrawal <laughs> with these two, with this polarity. So there's some relationship testing here. And it all depends on, can it stand the test of time? Right? So I totally understand why people don't get married again. Like, why bring the government and a business arrangement into your marriage? Although it does create a deeper level of commitment. But, but you know, I mean, I I, I can see I can see the benefits on both sides, but still, um, yeah. So there's relationship testing here. There are partnership tests here going on. And as we're approaching the new moon in the morning, again, you know, setting those intentions because this could be our experience for the for a whole month. You know, the new moon intention can, you know, come in. Set the set everything up, and there there can even be an illumination when the full moon comes in after. But um, but the the deal is is that it's still it's you know when you put intentions out there, it's you know energy wraps around those intentions. It's like the divine masculine and feminine coming together. The masculine is your words, your intentions, your actions, your doing, and you put it out there. And, and then the, the uh, Divine Feminine receives your intentions and helps it to grow. But we go through all those stages of, you know, you've got more opportunities, building opportunities with a semi-sextile, and, and the full-on opportunities when you have a se an actual sextile. And, and then we hit the square, and it's like, you know, okay, there's a real test here. And so this test is like, do you go forward with this person or this group? Or do you keep spending your money in that same way? 
Does it bring you, is, have you been just indulging or um, floundering around and not making a decision? Because we have choices, decision choices here with this T-square going on. And this is here for quite some time to stay. Uh, you know, we're working with it. Um, the exact square uh, comes off tomorrow, you'll see. It won't be there, but it's still it's 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 still within a wide enough orb. It, it's not an applying orb anymore. It's, it'll be a separating orb, and because of the retrogradation of series and now going and having gone direct, it's it's really important because it's nurturing justice and fairness and equality is basically what it's doing. So yeah. And then, you know, on the positive side with, with Libra, we're, we're much more social. We're much more uh, willing to, you know, put ourselves on the, um, on the other side of the, of the uh, equation to meet the other person and understand them. And, you know, both sides, like I was saying last week, creating those win-win situations. But it's, it's more of, you know, that connection. Like, Libra's so good about relating and engaging and connecting and sharing opportunities. And we learn from each other, too. So, anyway, th this, is, this is kind of where, where we're going. Um, Mars pretty soon will be in Cancer. So that's the backdrop there. Let me get back to the actual um, time of the new moon. Okay, so the aspects of this new moon are important. So we have two, two sesquisquares here connecting with Chiron and Eris. Okay, so with Chiron, I, this, this can have us feeling like there's a little, well, I never know how it's going to work out with the sesquisquares for you guys. It can be a detour or a major disruption. It can be a gentle detour where you're like, ah, this works better, I'll go this way. Or you're just drawn this way and you trust your instincts and you go. And that's especially true when it comes to um, uh, Eris in, in Aries here. Well, anything in Aries. Aries is all about the instincts and moving forward based on your instincts. I don't know if you've ever had, you know, a person that has a strong Aries in their chart and they're, they're those kind of people that they they can be driving and they just know the right way to go. They don't know the street name. They don't know, you know, but they it's like the visual marker of something. They've got burned in their brain and they just know how to go. <laughs> it's great. So, but anyway, with the new moon, sun and moon conjunct, we've got the divine masculine and feminine together here. We've got the divine feminine here uh, with... Virgo, I'm sorry, uh, Venus connecting in Libra to the south node of the past. And again, like I said, relationship decisions, financial decisions, uh, knowing, knowing the facts. When it comes to the sun and moon conjunct, the new moon at the second decan of the sign, we're, we're still, we're learning lessons. You know, we've created a foundation of we want the facts only. And we are speaking the facts, learning the facts, thinking about the facts, and how how they're useful to us. This is uh, Virgo is such a service oriented sign. Virgo is is all about uh, learning new things that are very practical, so that we can create new opportunities that are very specific. So it's all about specificity, discrimination. All those good things. You know, it's like, like you're balancing your checkbook. And it's like either there's enough money there or there's not. Or you're checking your bank balance and um, either you need more or you don't. <laughs> you know, it's like that. Just the facts. <laughs> and we could have a little bit of a disruption here because of Eris being at such a late degree of, um, well, She's not gonna. She's not gonna move. Eris won't move until what? What year? Oh, I forgot. I wrote it down. Um, it's quite some time before she moves into. Um, oh goodness, I'll have to get that for you later because I can't remember. I. Um, I guess the important thing to remember is that with Virgo, with the Moon 
and the sun, especially both the new moon. Virgo ruling the digestive tract and the endocrine system. We might be running a little too hot and need more water than usual. Okay, so maybe part of your new moon intention can be to, you know, always remember to get enough water in you. Usually by the time we're thirsty, we are already, well, not usually, when we're already, when we're thirsty, we're already dehydrated. So if we want some divine order going on in our endocrine system, you know, the hormonal balances and our digestive tract and all that, we're going to need to stay hydrated. But there's a lot of courage coming in over here from Eris. And, uh, you know, she's a feminine counterpart to, to, uh, to Pluto and, and Mars. She's, um, she takes 556 to 58 years to get around the Zodiac. So she's even stronger than Pluto. She's just sitting there in Aries saying, uh, you know what? <laughs> uh, I matter. I'm here. I'm in a body and I matter. All created beings, all created things on earth are that are here, they matter for some reason. We might not know what they are, and I mean, I really have a hard time with mosquitoes, but um, when we bring in this combination of Virgo and Eris, we are thinking more and more about um, our service to humanity, our service to those that we love in our lives, the things that we care about, and are we, you know, together, united that way? Or are we discerning and like cutting the wheat from the chaff? Because some people are not. You're figuring out like you thought they were trustworthy and they have disappointed you. You know, that's a real possibility. So it's discernment time with this new moon. And if you don't really know what you want or you have everything you want, then what I like to do is to use the intention to let to not miss anything, especially when the moon's in Virgo, when the new moon's in Virgo, sun and moon. Too, I mean, this this is the month for getting the information that you maybe didn't even know that you needed, and to get it in time and to not miss it, whatever it is, don't miss it, <laughs> and to let go of worry to let go of fear, to feel the fear and do it anyway, as long as you're not you know, going to hurt somebody else. Um, and be careful with your words. Um, but discernment, you know, like it's, it, it, it's all about, just because we're dipping back into Capricorn doesn't mean that Pluto and, and, and Aquarius isn't right there holding space for all of humanity. But... The important thing is to, you know, stay in that heart, heart-centered heart space. And I love that, that Mercury is still there in Leo to remind us, like, oh, come on. You know, open your heart. Maybe you guys are both thinking and saying the same thing, but just coming from a different angle, and there's no need for an argument. Because remember, we still have, you know, well, Jupiter and Gemini is it's just going to be that way for for some time. Uh, Mars will be in Cancer very soon, but at that later degree, again, th this is almost 29 degrees right here. So Mars in Gemini have been fighting words. It's been really good for, um, and in Gemini especially, it's been really good for, you know, the clever things, and, you know, it's been really good for the, um, for, you know, Kamala and Tim's um, campaign <laughs> out on the road. Uh, but, you know, there's that. But still, you, you know, arguments can happen in your personal lives, and you might not want that. And especially with the new moon, the aspects that, you know, this day. So, so just to reiterate, to get back into the Aries and then bring in some Chiron, just because, remember, these, this is a very tight orb here, but it is also including uh, Chiron. So with Chiron being the wounded, like part of ourselves, the deepest wounding, but also our deepest gifts and, and also relating to teachers, um, it, it can be all about the part of us that is um, kind of hurt and feels maybe small and too vulnerable. But when we 
when we heal and, and stand up for ourselves and we dare and we assert ourselves and we're going for our independence, then everything changes. And that's what Eris in Aries is all about. So if you've been feeling violated in some way by words or, or if you're healing old, uh, you know, past traumas, even from past lives, uh, don't be afraid to, to go into those feelings and to nurture and love yourself through them. And don't be afraid to reach out for help. Um, and also with this energy, let go. Just let go of thinking it matters if you're first. Because it doesn't. What matters is just that we get there. We don't have to be first. We don't always have to win, right? Remember the win-win situations with the, the Libra polarity there. Um, somebody will always pass, pass you the torch if you're anywhere nearby. <laughs> uh, but also, Aries is all about, it's, it's like pioneering energy. So if you're born with, with Chiron in Aries, it's very, now I don't know your chart, what house it lands in and the aspects and all of that, but it just, you know, it's ruled by Mars. Just think in terms of like what really motivates you? What will you fight for? What activates you? What gets you feeling very enthusiastic? You know, what's that thing that makes you want to... Um, whether or not it's something you have to fight for or there's a conflict around, it has to do with your independence and what what could be your very unique thing that you're doing in your in your life that is that makes you a pioneer in some way and that also serves humanity because it takes a lot of courage to do that and there's courage here with with the Aries uh, energy, there's courage with all the Leo energy here. And Jupiter's, you know, this is our Sagittarian energy, but, but Jupiter's also, you know, being in Gemini, it's, it's about thinking and learning new things. And with, even though there's no aspect here uh, coming off of Jupiter, it, it's, it's, you know, the planet that's holding space for us to learn our lessons. And you know, 20 degrees in, one more degree, we're going to be on the stage of, uh, you know, something blooming and blossoming. So, <laughs> so think of all the things that you're studying and learning about and, and, and soon it'll be like, it'll set in, you'll get it. You know how like when you're learning something new, if you, if you're listening to someone talk about it and you take down notes, then what happens is, is that you, you really get it in. And if you're if you're watching it, like if it's a video and they're talking and you get the visual at the same time you're writing down the notes, boy, you can really you can really learn really well. So yeah, that's why I have a whole library of astrology lessons that way. Uh, in tarot, also I have astrology, tarot, Lenamon, Kipper. And some spiritual, just, you know, plain old spiritual healing type of things. So that can be really helpful if you want that, um, if, you, if you're trying to learn uh, astrology especially. So let's see, what else? Um, so this is close to 7 p.m. I forgot to tell you that in the beginning. 6.56 p.m. is the legal new moon. But, you know, it doesn't really matter what time you start setting those intentions. So uh, with Mars squaring Neptune, this is important here, and this will be lasting a little bit, but a couple more days, I think, in a tight orb anyway. So Mars squaring ne Neptune will bring in a test around, hmm, could be, ooh, were we compassionate enough with our words and the way we're thinking about each other were we um, numbing out with too much information? Mars and Gemini can be TMI. Neptune can be numbing out. Neptune and Pisces can be overwhelming, you know, and it can be with Pisces energy, we always have to be careful about being just kind of all over the place, like taking, because we're sponges, you know. When you, when you have a, 
a prominent Neptune in your chart, like if it's on your ascendant or close to one of your personal planets or ha has a lot of aspects to it, uh, what can happen is, is that you, one day you realize how sensitive you are and that you're just, you know, absorbing everything. So, um, you know, because Pisces is so beautiful for healing and including everything and, and just letting things flow through. So with the square, we do have a test here. Like, what do we stand up for? What do we fight for? And so we may have to really, with this new moon, maybe set an intention about being very careful uh, with your boundaries around your time, the time you spend, so that you can tend to your artistic projects or any project that you have been working on so that you can move forward. Because again, Mars is going into Cancer pretty soon. And um, and then, you know, then we'll have a, a trine. That'll be a nice, we have that flow coming in uh, to Mars to Neptune. But right now there's a test. I can't say what that test will be for you, but I can just kind of throw some things out there and hope that it helps. Um, the squares bring in obstacles and they usually show up as a challenge to do something. Uh, they help us to manifest. They help us to master something in our lives. Uh, but let's just be careful that it's not an argument that makes someone feel victimized. This is terrible for politics right here. This aspect for politics is terrible, absolutely terrible, because this is somebody, and you know who I'm talking about, who will say anything and lie their you-know-what's off just to scapegoat and gaslight. You know, Neptune and Pisces can, and Saturn as well, we can include Saturn and Pisces, can be used in distortion in very corrupt governments and by people who, you know, want to just take over a vulnerable mind. It can be part of like a cultish vac you know, vacuum where people are just victimized and, and, um, and they're hateful. They're, being, they're just very hateful. Mars and Gemini can just be really hateful words, and they don't care about someone else. So we have to be careful there. Um, you know, not to glom on to any of that, but I guess, I guess a challenge, no, I don't guess, I know, the challenge, and I'm just going to speak for myself here, but the challenge for me is to always try to I don't know that I can't say that I always do it, but to try to catch myself right off the bat when I get the that first negative thought pops into my head and, um, you know, to just stop and try and send that whole situation and those people just send tons of love. But at first I tend to go into reaction because I know people aren't safe and I know people are being victimized. So that's, um, that's really challenging when that happens. Uh, yeah, and even though you can't see it here, Saturn is still square Jupiter. Jupiter's only at 19. Saturn's, Saturn's still at 16. It's only a three-degree orb, so we still have Saturn square Jupiter. Um, it'll, it'll peak in May of, no, I'm sorry, June. I think it's June. Um, yeah. I know we had one peak last month, but it's, there's going to be another one in June of next year. But And we're not going to be complete with the whole Saturn. I remember this date for sure. The whole Saturn square aspect. You get Saturn and Jupiter are the builders of the zodiac. Remember last week I was talking about Saturn expands and then, I'm sorry, <laughs> Jupiter expands and then Saturn tests reality. Like you've gone into an area, is this where you want to build? Or, you know, it's there. So Saturn kind of goes in, expands, explores. Do you want to invest? Do you believe in it? And Saturn's like, okay, let's test some reality here. So we do have issues with uh, immigration. We do have issues with homelessness. 
in big cities, we do have, um, you know, we there are so many problems that need to be solved. But anyway, back to the um, the dates, like the, none of the, this whole Saturn square, you know, the whole test for the, you know, the healing and the testing and creating the structure for the healing, it won't be resolved until, you know, well past the election. And, um, and then on even in one more year, we have to get a year past our election before uh, that the building process won't, you know, will feel complete. So we're learning the art of handling frustration and time management. And we have to be very careful with over committing. And we have to evaluate, you know, what we can actually do. So, yeah. And when the, you know, the squares come back in real, in a real tight orb, we'll, we'll see that. I'll, I'll take you through that when we get there. Okay, so Mercury has a trine to Chiron. So again, Mercury and Leo is speaking to your self-expression, your creativity, your identity. It can also relate to our fathers. It can relate to our children. It has everything to do with our self-confidence. And, um, you know, Leos don't like it when they're not recognized. And Leos don't like it when uh, some narcissistic person is trying to control them. Or we don't like it if, it doesn't matter what sign you are. <laughs> we don't like it, right? But you know, the dark side of Leo can be narcissistic. It can be my way or the highway kind of a thing. Um, but on the bright side, it, it's, it's, uh, it brings in opportunities and it's like, uh, you know, who doesn't love to be entertained by bright lights and who doesn't love to be seeing children just be themselves? I, um, you know, just think of the sun shining and, and all that light, but, and with the trying to Chiron, the deeper gifts can come through the deeper, deeper gifts of Aries. So again, that independence and that trailblazing self-assertion and um, bottom line, existence, right? So maybe we're talking more, learning more because it's Mercury. Mercury's the messenger. Maybe there's a lot more coming out. And this could, Mercury rules the news. So there could be something, you know, with the news on Monday that brings through and it could be Monday morning even, you know, that brings through um, maybe maybe something about protecting um, the vulnerable, protecting the young, protecting uh, the new on, on any level. And then with the Sesqua Square up to Ceres, like I said before, um, you know, there could be a disruption, there could be a detour, and it, that would be coming from people that need to get on board because nobody wants project 2025 nobody wants it was like 80 percent of people or so um <laughs> we don't want anything that they're offering and the only uh, you know the 20 percent are probably that the are not on board probably just haven't read it or 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 haven't don't even know that it's there that it's been you know they've been working on it for years so, okay, let's see, anything else? For us personally, I feel like this one is just about maybe a detour to figure out the best way to nurture something, uh, to get it working properly. You know, um, uh, Capricorn is so connected to our, let me get my shoes back on in here. My feet are get, actually getting cold. It got down to 37 this morning. Can you believe that? <laughs> it's like, wow. So I'm like by putting my slippers on and off under here. So um, with with the um, series being in Capricorn, Capricorn has uh, it, it's that you know it's that quality of what we will take responsibility for. Where do we have control, especially over time? It doesn't mind hard work. It, it's it's our sense of duty. Uh, and again, it's another one of those signs it doesn't like being disrespected or being overlooked. And on the dark side, it's another sign of um, that tends to be a little narcissistic, because they they're just um, they want all the resources, they want to be in control, 
and they want to just manipulate everything for them. And they can be quite abusive too. So there could be something that comes out on the news about somebody who has manipulated and abused resources or people or, you know, all that. So this is the, the force field of energies that are in place in this new moon. And they could dictate this new moon is setting off because the moon's a luminary, the sun is a luminary, and they're connected together. So this is setting off, you know, this whole next month. So that's that's really important. And then especially, you know, with, with Capricorn, I mean, I'm sorry, with Pluto back here at that nth degree of Capricorn, that anoretic intense degree, you know, over the coming weeks, there are, there's going to be some major transformative issues that are that are up against, um, you know, we're, we will be resisting, right? So people will probably start figuring out that there's a price to pay if you don't want to vote. There's a price to pay if you want to um, just give up your your right to assert yourself, you know, with, with this, all this Aries energy over here, the Capricorn energy. I mean, these are cardinal movement oriented. And with the nodes in Aries and Libra, there's all this cardinal movement er uh, energy. And then with the Gemini and Pisces, it's like we're trying, you know, to think in new ways. People are trying to learn about what's really going on. And my goodness, with Uranus, having moved into, you know, retrograded uh, and having been in um, uh, Taurus for the last six some years, it's, you know, it takes seven years to, all the way, to get all the way through the sign, we're, we're dealing with, uh, you know, safety, our safety and our, our security, our self-preservation. Do we survive? These are major survival issues. And also what brings in uh, you know, those principles that we hold faithful to, we're, we're thinking that way. So, okay, let's go ahead and go to Tuesday. Now, Tuesday, the moon has moved forward enough. It's gone crossed over um, six degrees away, well, about five degrees there. But anyway, it opposes Saturn. So there's a confrontation. I Now, the, politically, this could be a confrontation because remember, you know, <laughs> uh, Mercury the messenger is still here in Leo talking about somebody who is trying to abuse their authority and abusing their, you know, the words that come out of their mouth, we, right? You know what I'm talking about. Is it true? Is it lying? Is it, yeah, I mean, if the guy's still breathing, he's lying. <sighs> And with the, the trying to Chiron, a tight the in tight orb here, victimizing, like I said before, the young, the vulnerable, the, the new. And and this can be, you know, it's just because it's a trying doesn't mean it's always harmonious. A lot of times it's just a real fast moving connection. Same thing with the sextile. Just because it's a blue line doesn't mean everything's happy. This could be the connection of something coming out of somebody's mouth who uh, is not thinking correctly he, and he's very impulsive, you know. And narcissism is an impulse control disorder. So just hands down, anybody that's narcissistic will always give them enough rope and eventually they'll hang themselves. And he does it on a daily basis with his words. So, and with all this Gemini action, and his, you know, his natal setup here. All this. Jupiter and Mars has been up here. Mars is now in the 11th. So it's like <laughs> all those, how many, how many times can the guy post to his untrue social? How many times can he just blow up? He's like self-imploding in public. And that's another thing that, that um, you know, famous people do. They do, everything's out in the public. So, so there's that. Okay, but for us personally, we're going to be witnessing that. It's going to be out on the news. 
people will be detouring away from him more and more. The more that it comes out, the more that he's, you know, talking. There's more opportunity. I know we can't stand listening to him. I know it's, you know, kind of, I just try to send love, but I can't listen to his voice. And when I see his face, I, I have to stop and either either turn it off or send love. If I if I'm not if I can't find the love yet, I just look away. <laughs> but um, yeah, the the guy's got a real problem. But he's here to teach us. He's here. He's here to teach us what life would be like if you let a dictator into the Oval Office. And he's been there once. And look at all the damage he did. Just look at the damage he did. And then he wouldn't leave, didn't want to leave. And when he finally got out, he had to create a coup from the inside. So just a reminder there what it would be like if he ever got back in. And he's already said, he's already said, he'll be dictator from day one, only for a day, because that's all it would take. And he would, it would be his revenge tour. And he continues to keep talking that way, too. So in, in case, you know, people didn't know yet, it's easy to remind it. And I love the news for just constantly putting it out there. He should be heard for everything he says because he's telling you who he is and people need to know. We're sick of it, of course. That's why I say we need those breaks. You know, don't, don't stay focused on it. You know, that's kind of my job, but I don't want you guys dealing with that. But it does, it certainly does help me when you teach me too because I, I don't catch everything. So, okay, the moon opposing Saturn, that is exactly what I'm talking about. The moon in the second decan of the sign, of, you know, it's the furk around and find out phase. And do you want to be victimized? There's a confrontation right here. The details are out. The facts are out. If it's not about politics for you, then this will be about your usefulness your health, your service, your work, your small animals, your, um, your ability to discern. It will be about connecting the dots and tracking patterns. It will be about, you know, practical, very, very practical phase of, uh, you know, learning lessons. And then being able to, maybe that's not a confrontation, maybe it's a breakthrough in your manifesting. Maybe it's a big old breakthrough in your creative projects and the spiritual foundation that you're, uh, you know, trying to build and, and living your life from that instead of um, just being all over the place or feeling um, a little, maybe full of anxiety. There, there, there can be a little connection to anxiety here if, if you're not connected with your guides and your guardian angels and and that doesn't mean that you have to hear them or see them or feel them. You just put the intention out there. You say, I need, I want your protection. I, I give you, if you're connected to your heart, you have to put the, you have to have a script that you work by. You don't just open up to spirit because there's all kinds of spirits. You don't just say spirit, okay? You say the highest levels of love and light and truth. Or I'm, um, you know, call it God if you want, unless that triggers you in a religious way. I don't think of it that way, but if you do, then don't use that word. You could use great spirit. You could use, um, you could use any deity that you know was very, very pure at heart. Um, and then again, it depends on what you want, <laughs> like what, like what you're working with for a while. Like you might need you might need more courage, and there's a deity you connect there. You might need more uh, soft and gentle, you know, so you, maybe it's like Kuan Yin. Um, uh, yeah, so I, 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 use your words, okay? The words are here with the Gemini. The words are here with Leo. Connect with your heart. Have the courage to set the boundaries. You put a boundary in place before you open up to the spiritual realms, because the spiritual realms are, it can be anything and everything. So you want to say only the highest levels of love and light get anywhere near me. And that's the guidance that you want to open to all the time, right? And even if you get lower self-guidance, like your, you connect with your higher self, you can get lower self-guidance by because your higher self will tell you where you're off. 
your higher self will tell you when you're in your lower self. And then that's when you have to do not judge yourself. You do not need to be perfect. Don't go into any like false like sense of guilt and morality and all that. Just go, oh, okay. Well, <laughs> I can I can take a deep breath and just breathe all that out and, and open up to the, again, the love and the light and, and clear it all out. The Pisces energy will just cleanse. It, it will cleanse. The Neptunian and Pisces energy will uh, dissolve whatever needs to go. It will transcend. It will help you transcend. People like to use the word ascend. I like to get down in the dirt and work on it myself, but you don't really ascend unless you work on your dirt, okay? <laughs> and then you can transcend it. You can rise above it, but you have to get into it, right? Yeah. It's, it's like the lotus flower that blooms in the mud, you know? <laughs> okay, so with the Saturn opposition, we also have the inconjunct going on with, between Mars and um, Pluto. So again, making those distinction as to lies versus truth. These could be very, very controlling lies and words. Literally, absolutely literally this can be the 922 page document of the project 2025 right here it's in words and it's a controlling document and they, they want to abolish the constitution and put this 922 page plan into place how do you like them apples i um, on the personal level with Mars at that anoretic intense degree of Gemini, again, at the phase of blooming, it's all about what have you learned and now which way do you really want to go that will create more security and safety? That's when Mars, you know, when it moves into Cancer, which will be very soon. Um, and how do you have control over, are you the power in your life? Well, we won't be if we have a dictator back in the White House, so that's what it's all about. <laughs> that's just what it's about, right? What are you going to get behind? And, and not to like proselytize or be, you know, too judgmental here, but it, these decisions are on our soul. If we don't vote, that's on our soul. If we don't, you know, and there will be a payment that will be, that will, I mean, the decision to not make a decision is a decision. And we have to stand up for some things. We, we, if we don't, it's like, what does Kamala say? If we, know, if we know where we stand, we know what to fight for. Yeah. So you have to decide what you stand for. And that's all that ever really matters. You know. Okay. Let's go to Wednesday. Now we have Mars, and Cancer happens at 2.47 p.m. Pacific time. And we still have the in conjunct of Pluto, so everything I said is right there. Same thing. Uh, the other aspects are still there. Mercury trining uh, Chiron. Everything I said about yesterday is still in play. The, the new flavor is that the moon's in Libra, and, and the... the um, uh, the T-square with the nodes and series, it's still there, even though we don't see it. We, we see this one leg over here, not this one over here. It's still there. I don't know why it dropped off. It's 6 degrees 38 minutes here. Why is it Why then 6 degrees 38 minutes over here? Why is it not there? That's a flaw in the program. Um, but it's okay. You, just imagine it's still there. Because <laughs> it is. You don't have to imagine it. Anyway, Mars, again, the planet that fights. It, it's all about our, what we want. It, it moves uh, energy. It activates things. It motivates us. It rules the military. It's all about our independence. It will defend against all costs our, you know, our, in, our independence. And it can be very, you know, it can be based in conflict. And it usually has to do with the male, you know, stereotypes. Um, but now in Cancer, we've, it's very feminine. And even though we 
can't see the opposition here. It's within a six degree orb, a little over six and a half orb to, and it won't be long before it's exactly opposing series. So the, again, the confrontation with what do you really want to have in your life as a set pattern that you can build upon. This is like, you know, the, the land and then the home. You know, you, you build or both. It, it can be it can be land here, home here. It's it's all one big thing to me. Just one, the polarity just blends together. Um, Cancer is all about home, hearth, nurturing. I uh, it's ruled by the moon, so it has to do with our habits and our inner rhythms and our cycles of life, and uh, our coping skills, and. You know, cancer wants things to grow. Cancer's very focused on our uh, emotional security and trying to protect ourselves. And it can also be very intuitive and very psychic, but it's, you know, it's, it's about our roots and our past, our parents, our children, um, anything small that we're nurturing, anything that's growing. But Aries can be that way as well, too. It's just with Aries... The sprout's really tiny, and and um, but then again, we can plant new seeds in Cancer, right? It's yeah, <laughs> or yeah. I, I was gonna say something else, but I, I don't think I will. I, okay, so let's see. That's about it with Mars. I mean, with the initial entrance, the ingress ingress into Cancer. This is the only. Uh, aspect, but as the the moon moves by, you know, uh, like a half a degree every hour, we're we're dealing, you know, with it'll it'll be bumping up against, like I said, um, uh, Pluto more and Ceres more. So that that's the focal of this, uh, and then it, it will be squaring the nodes too because it's only. Um, here, let's just do this. <laughs> All right. How do you like them apples? That's a lot to look at. But now you can see the squares, the triple squares up to series. And the T, so we've got a grand square going on, basically. So here's one T square from the nodes. Here's the other square, the other T square from Mars to Neptune and to the moon and the south node. And Venus, it's every degree, every every little bit that Mars moves by, we were we will have a triple square over here. Right now we have this stellium in Libra. So the moon in Libra wants peace. Maybe we'll have maybe something, some news will come through as to uh, peace somewhere. Then again, the Libra Aries polarity it tends to deal with with trying to protect, and then going to war. You know, I mean, yeah, because remember, it can be the the me versus them or us versus them that kind of trouble. But Venus has moved on well one degree beyond the south node. So there, I think probably there's still some dealing with the past, but there is that moving away from the past. And that certainly will happen. But then there'll be an op you know, opposition to Eris and Chiron later on. We'll see that coming up next week, probably the week after. But for today, with the moon in Libra, I just remember the moon is like, um, it's our need for comfort. Well, in Libra, it's balance. In Libra, it's about uh, relationship and connecting with others and sharing opportunities. But on the dark side, it can be being ghosted. It can be somebody who's just kind of floundering around and they're not committing and or they just want to be on one side or the other. So it's polarizing and it can be manipulating and it can be dependent and codependent. So can Cancer. Mars and Cancer. Mars can be about 
moving the energy so that you find the dependency and codependency in in your relationships or what you grew up in and that imprint you're letting go of it can definitely be that. Venus tends to be our personal love where Neptune tends to be your spiritual love. So there's still that connection there with the, the moon. Because Venus rules Libra and, and Taurus, but the moon in Libra is directly opposing uh, Neptune over here. So this could be a very spiritual experience in a love relationship or meeting some kindred spirits that you really do like and you really want to connect with more. And you can see the trine here from the moon to Uranus. This could, could be a very enlightened group. I mean, can you see the grand trine here? The grand, it's not, I can't say it's a grand earth trine because this these are air signs, but, but it's still connected there. So, yeah. Connections that bring in maybe some earthly, earthly power that are very enlightened. Sounds, it sounds good to me for, uh, well, we're not totally out of the retro shade yet. So I was going to say it sounds good for like building a website or a new business, but yeah, I wouldn't want to launch until we get out of the retro shade. So that, that would be when Mercury gets to four degrees of uh, Virgo. So it, it won't take too long. But <laughs> there's a kite here. From Neptune to Pluto. So two sextiles here with uh, Neptune at the apex and the trine. Uh, and then the tail is at the moon. So the, the moon in Libra is guiding. So it's about weighing and making decisions, like weighing the scales. It, you know, to, So maybe it's, you're not making a decision today but you know what you want and you're going towards, you're learning more and more about what you want. What brings in more security? Maybe you're working on your psychic development and boy, does the, uh, actually all of these signs relate to it. Cancer, Libra, even Capricorn, because that, that's like, you know, you can feel it in your bones. And of course, Pisces. So yeah, okay, let's go ahead and go to Thursday. Thursday, the moon's uh, still in Libra, of course, but it's on the other side of Venus. So there was, you know, that hooking up with the past and, <laughs> and maybe, maybe there's been some, um, uh, maybe there's been some relationship uh, balancing out or balancing out finances, things like that. Let me go back to the exact aspects, the tighter orbs there. But you, you can see there's still, you know, there's all of that. Now, um, yeah, and still Mars, right? But really just to speak to the, the moon in Libra, it's, it's just, it's an excellent day. I would just say all day Thursday is really good for connecting and weighing and balancing which way you want to go, how you want to, maybe even what you want your experience to be as you go. Like if you're planning travel, uh, or maybe it has to do with how you relate. I mean, if you're in a relationship and, and you're um, going to therapy, it be a great day for it Thursday. Couples relationship work, you know, couples counseling. Um, but for most of all, just it, it, maybe something happens with, um, maybe something comes out in the news that, that has to do with some balancing something out with women's rights. There, there's that possibility. We have um, a semi-square here coming from, yeah, the, it's, it is from the moon to um, Mercury. So, so the semi-square can bring through indecision. 
Uh, so maybe there's the you know, there's still you're still feeling your way through it, and the decision hasn't been made yet. Whatever it is, which is okay. It's it's there's nothing wrong with taking your time, but you have to decide at some point. But I would think that this little sojourn of the not only the um, the new moon in Virgo, just you know, kind of standing back and seeing the whole picture gathering the facts with all the Virgo energy and then talking to people about the facts with all the Libra energy and then making a, a informed decision because of all the, um, remember we had all the, we had that stellium for a while in, uh, well, we had Mars and Jupiter together and um, the moon was in there as well the last week, week before, it's the week before, I think. But anyway, We've had the emphasis in learning and learning and discerning and and then now balancing out and and thinking in ways that are more just and what what brings in the new legal future that we could all be living in. So okay, let's go ahead and go to Friday. Now Friday we have the moon opposing Chiron. This doesn't happen until seven thirty nine in the morning. But when, you know, now whatever time you get up, it, you know, the moon will still be in Libra. And um, uh, so there's, you know, there's there's that. But then at a certain point in the morning, bumping up against Chiron, this, this could be a little confrontation or a mirroring. Maybe it's a healthy mirror for you in relationship where somebody says, you, you know, just do you have any idea how fantastic you really are? You know, and the and you're like, what? Because we don't see ourselves, right? Like we don't usually. I mean, it'd be a great thing if we did that, if we did all that mirror work and did all that stuff. But I don't know. I tend to just keep working and don't have the time. But I hear it's a great thing to do. <laughs> so, but relationships are mirrors, and that is the lesson with any Libra energy. Relationships are mirrors. So hopefully we're mirroring the healthy parts of ourselves to them and they're mirroring the healthy parts back and forth. And there's independence and autonomy going on, but sometimes it can get kind of mixed up in, well, is it me or is it them? And you doubt yourself. And maybe it's a little bit of both and there's nothing wrong with, with any of that. But discerning and finding, you know, there's a breakthrough point of really settling into what is true for you. And that's, that's one of the major lessons here with the opposition there to Chiron. Uh, Mercury has now advanced to the point to where we have an exact, almost exact, square to Uranus. So this is a very, even though it's a square, and usually squares are tension fields, what we have going on here uh, with Mercury and Uranus combining is very intuitive thinking. Uranus can be about thinking. Now, I mean, uh, intuitive, and Mercury is always about thinking and communicating. But now, on the other hand, if it's coming from the dark side, this can be somebody who is shocking, or we're shocked, I don't know, we shouldn't be, but, you know, we're shocked by the words coming out of their mouth because they're so friggin' nar narcissistic <laughs> and controlling and and uh, attention-seeking, sucking, vampiring. <laughs> Catch my drift. Drama. The drama king that can be shocking to some people. Maybe it'll be a breaking point for some people. Maybe somebody... You know, who knows how many people every day are like, my God, what is coming out of his face now? Meanwhile, over here, we have Kamala talking about all the work she wants to do for everybody. And, and you tune into her and Tim, you know, Harrison Walls, and, you, and it feels so much better, right? I mean, anybody should be able to feel that. With the, the sun in the second decan of Virgo, we're learning, the, again, back to the facts, learning more and more and more. And with the sesquisquadre, sesquisquare up to um, Pluto, uh, again, disruptions. 
So learning more facts, the words came out. Mercury rules Gemini and Virgo. So the communication of the facts, are they lies? Are they useful? What's coming out of his face? Oh my God, again, or, uh, you know, now I finally hear it. Like now I can even hear the, the degree of psychopathology or psychopathy and um, deep, 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 deep insecurity in his voice. Because when I hear his voice, that's what I hear. And then I hear the wounded toddler that is didn't ever get his way or uh, as much as he wanted or needed because there's, you know, it's just like Mary Trump's book. Too much and never enough. Too much money but not enough love. Right? So, again, try to just send him love. And then that exact opposition coming from the moon to Chiron, yeah, with all that, it's just right there. Okay, let's go to Saturday. Saturday, September 7th, 5 a.m. The, the sun's now at 15 degrees of Virgo. We still have the sesquiquadrate to Pluto. So everything I said about yesterday is the case. The sun is opposing Saturn. So now there's a spotlight shining, a spotlight of facts shining on people in the government who are trying to victimize others. But for us, it can be some more good, working, useful facts that use, useful to help us, you know, in our service, whatever it is, and, and that, you know, helps to build that solid foundation. But it's serious. This is serious here. Serious um, feeling. F serious vibes. And the Mercury to uh, Uranus is still there, of course. It's, it's exact this morning even earlier in the morning. And so from there, there, there can be those intuitive hits at, that come now with Leo at that later degree as well. We're, we're in the realm of blooming and deepening, so it can be a heartfelt or it can be just direct knowing when it comes to Leo. Leo and um, Capricorn are really good for direct knowing. Capricorn in the bones, Leo in the core, the solar plexus. And hitting Uranus, it's, it has to do with um, something very unique and intuitive and inventive, possibly. Now, troubling with this square could be something a little shocking and erratic and somebody who is speaking from such authority, but it, it's um, rebellious and it's very opinionated, and it's detached, detached from the heart. Okay, not good. Sunday, oh, whoops, I'm sorry, hold on, I won't hit Sunday yet. I forgot to talk about the moon in Scorpio. Um, well, let's just go hour by hour. Let's see, we have a sesquiquadrate to Jupiter, so now when the moon's in Scorpio, it's, it's all about going deeper. It's about transforming. It's about refining things, uh, the subtle refinements that put the finishing touches on things or the going deeper into, um, again, you know, any type of therapy is really good under a Scorpio moon. Um, it, Scorpio is really good for working through conflicts and creating harmony out of a conflict, going into the conflict because you're not afraid, and you, you want to figure out the cause, and you want to figure out how things work, and and then you find the harmony, and you also find a new, a brand new set of opportunities, and, and it's, you know, it's our, it's our sign of uh, transformation, self-transformation, going deeply into yourself. Now, on the dark side, uh, Scorpio not working in the light can be about, you know, just sucking the energy out. It can be about consuming too much energy for some reason or another, and it can destroy opportunities because of that. With the sesquiquadrate to Jupiter, it can be big suck of time based on what someone has said, 
words that are out there or trying to get to the truth of what somebody is saying or writing and it's too complicated you know with this sesquisquadrate right here sesquisquadrate is, is sometimes it's just it's like you can't get into it so you just go away from it because it's not clear some some people don't write well some people are brilliant but they don't write the the words don't come out in a way that you can feel what they're trying to say and that that could be a situation like that now with the the sun in uh, Virgo and especially with the opposition to Saturn that could bring through the the edits that help make something more clear like if you have an editor that has a prominent Virgo or Scorpio, <laughs> like maybe they have a, a Virgo sun ascendant or moon and Scorpio's prominent somewhere in their chart too with the mother combination there. They'd make a great editor. So yeah, okay, now let's go to Sunday. So Sunday, I'm going to take you through the moon aspects, um, but just to note here that Mercury will step into Virgo late tonight. Now, if it's Eastern time, it'll be tomorrow. It'll be on the um, 9th. This this one is for September 8th. Um, Mercury makes it into Virgo at 11.50 p.m. Pacific time. So it won't be, you know, it'll be next week, but it won't be long before we're out of the retro shade. Okay, so the moon starts at 15 degrees, 5 a.m., 15 degrees of Scorpio and it trines Saturn. So there's that nice easy flow of quick energy that is very psychic, goes deep, and, and then we've got psychic energy over here too. So that is, that's excellent. Now it could bring through some information from dream time that helps you to transform or to transmute, or maybe you're recycling, the, clearing out the old. Sometimes dreams are just clearing. They're, they're giving you information that's coming out of your subconscious and you don't need to worry about it. If you can't figure it out, it doesn't make any sense. And if you've put yourself in the position of every person in the dream and it still is crazy, then maybe you're just clearing out an old stupid movie you watched that you shouldn't have watched, you know? <laughs> or clearing out the news, right? It could certainly be that. So sometimes it's nothing to worry about it. But this could bring through some really useful information that helps you to grow and resolve something and create a brand new beginning. I, okay, now with the Mercury in conjunct to uh, Pluto, we don't, we don't have a... Wait, hold on. Uh, yeah... I could say there's a yod here. Let's let's do that. Let's just look at that. A yod coming from Mercury. So that's at 5 a.m. Oh, I bet if I go forward, let's go ahead and go forward one hour. Two hours? No, it won't. You know what? It won't because I'm, it's just not picking up that um, exact sextile. But it's still there. Pluto is still sextiling. Or I should say, transiting Neptune is still sextiling Pluto. But the two inconjuncts pointing to Mercury, that's what we want to talk about. Now, the inconjuncts, quincunx here, the little green lines with the K, sideways K, uh, those are adjustments that need to be made because something's not feeling right. Something's off. Now, with Mercury at almost 29 degrees of uh, Leo, you know, it's, it can be intense uh, power plays because it's connecting to pl powerful Pluto and it's connecting to uh, Saturn up here. Oh, I'm sorry, Neptune over here. So this can be, what did they just say? Did they really say that? Or, or what are they trying to say? Or what's being left out? What's being omitted? What, is, what are they trying to glaze over? What fog What's, you know, obfuscation is, is, you know, what are they hiding, basically? And we hear it. We see it. We know it. So have the courage to not, try, not uh, doubt yourself. I want you to trust yourself if you're picking up on something, either in a relationship or a situation in your life. Like, 
you know, trust your heart, have the self-confidence, start thinking more about um, thinking and communicating from the perspective of, you know, expressing who you truly are, coming from your love, of course, and, and how, what I'm seeing primarily here is how powerful you truly are in manifesting whatever it is that you want to bring into your life. But you have to go to the place where you already have it. You have to sit in that. You have to move through life like you already have it. You can't be in worry and you can't be in fear and you can't be in, well, you can, but you'll get more of that. So if, if you're if you're moving through life, you know, feeling like, oh, I, I wish I had that. I don't have that. Oh, darn it. I don't have, I'll never have that. Or I can't even imagine what it would be like. Like, like, you know, we've been through this hell realm of Trump for since 2015, and we got used to that. And that is called PTSD. And that, so that is, that, that's a low-level form of trauma that is, uh, you know, everybody has to let go of. We have to clear that out. So focus on the joy. Just keep focusing on what Kamala says and what Tim is saying. Listen to them. And, you know, go there. But most people are attracted to the negative more than the positive. That's why I'm always enforcing about creating positive reality. And you can see it on my videos. I'm doing week, I've been doing for a month or more weekly videos. I've been doing weekly and at one point I did daily videos on Trump just because I was worried about what he was doing all the time or wanted to keep an eye on him. But when he was in the, you know, in the White House. But um, if you look at my, the, the numbers, the views, uh, Kamala gets a little fraction of what Trump gets. I do weekly readings on both, and it might only be one or 2,000 views on her, but there'll be four or five or six on him. Like, what? Why? Why? Well, it's because we're not worried about her. It's because we can relax with her. But I want to say, don't take the people who are working in the light for granted. Give them the energy they need. Give them, just keep sending them love and strength and, and tons of, um, just send them lots of energy. Strength, support, all of that. So, okay, that's all I wanted to say about that. <laughs> but this is a yod. So we do have the opportunity to know our spiritual power, spiritual power, and then think about it and speak it. And again, when it comes back to manifesting, speak as if you already have it. Whether it's, um, you know, health, you're working on a health issue, right? And maybe there's that. Um and then we still, you know, see how Uranus is here at 27 degrees and Pluto's at 29, even though the line's not showing there. This is still within orb. So uh, Taurus is all about the body. It's all about the neck and the throat. And Uranus can bring through sometimes just some lightning, you know, healing. Some, uh, I mean, this can be laser surgery. This can be Uranus relates to... Um, being free. So maybe you're, you're going to be free of some major health issue that you've been dealing with. So, yeah. Okay, let's go ahead and go with the moon. Okay, so now, uh, 7 a.m., we have the aspect of the architect coming from the sun, the moon, over to Saturn. This is excellent for problem solving and bringing through... Uh, you know, something that you've been working on and, and, you know, creating a solid foundation, especially with the moon there in Scorpio, you could, uh, with the exact uh, sextile there, there's the opportunity to figure out something on a deep level and then build upon it. Okay, let's go forward again. Now with Sesco Square to Mars, there can be a little detour because maybe you put something else into the mix but that's okay. That's all right. Try it out. Let's keep going. That so that sesquic square is uh, that's in orb until noon. And now we have an inconjunct coming from the moon to um, Jupiter. 
So there's there could be an adjustment because now with the moon at that 19 degrees, we've learned some major lessons in whatever we were working on. And now if we want to go bigger, and this could have to do with editing a book, you know, or editing um, text for a website or whatever you're, you know, whatever it is, I this could this could be bringing something through to make it more concise, you know, more pinpointed and concise. It could be a new idea that just suddenly blossoms out of your consciousness and then you have to make that adjustment <laughs> because now you know something and then you gotta, whatever it is, take advantage of it. And that aspect brings us all the way through to 5 p.m. And I'll just go with this last one because, you know, it's Sunday and I'm you know, probably not working anyway um, this late. But with the moon at 21 degrees, we're definitely, um, we've blossomed deeply on some level. Maybe we've worked through some trust and betrayal issues. And we're now with the um, Sesco Square to the North Node, there's a little detour on whatever direction we've been going. Just a little detour. So I don't know what that'll be for you guys, but just wanted to put that out there. And you can see how that um, that yod, that finger of fate, is still there. Let's see how long that lasts. I mean, that's to this to Mercury. So I we might be taking that into um, into next week, which could be kind of, well, yeah, no, the, there's there's 10 p.m. Sunday. We lost the one leg. Yeah. But look at look at uh, the evening where it's again back to that who's who's saying what and how disruptive what an adjustment to power the power dynamics interesting and then the moon making that adjustment over to uh, with Chiron um, yeah back to. Asserting yourself. Don't be afraid to assert yourself because that's exactly the action that's needed in order to um, into, into you know your self your duty to yourself, your self-responsibility. If if you, if we don't stand up for ourselves, you know, it's when we're adults, I mean adulting, we, we have to adult. <laughs> if we don't stand up for ourselves, who's going to? Some, sometimes, you know, a friend's right there and they can say, hey, come on. Uh, but most of the times we have to do it for ourselves. So anyway, that's all I have for this week. Thanks, you guys, so much. Take good care. Have a wonderful, wonderful week. Bye.